A radical rethink is needed in terms of how population numbers are framed. That's according to the UN Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency, which says that government policies to raise, lower or maintain fertility rates are often ineffective and can actually erode women's rights. So are we asking the wrong questions when it comes to the global population? To find out, we're joined by our guest for Perspective, DNA Keita. Thank you so much for being with us. You are Deputy Executive Director of the United Nations Population Fund. You're in France, uh, DNA, for the launch of the State of the World Population Report. Let's just start with the title of that report. Eight billion people, an infinite horizon of possibilities. But some might say that such high numbers on the planet might be a cause of concern. So why for you is it something to be optimistic about? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, we need to be op optimistic about it. Eight billion people, we are eight billion because we have healthier life, because the society is being better. We are growing. And there is infinite possibility. It all goes back about rights and choices. So that's what the infinite possibility that we have before us and everywhere around the world. Um, and we talked, I talked in the introduction there just about what you say about government policies. You know, different countries with different policies. Some are aimed at raising, lowering, maintaining fertility rates. But the UN says that those efforts are often ineffective and they can erode women's rights rather than helping them. Why is that and how does that happen? Absolutely. Our low fertility, high fertility doesn't matter. We have noticed in the studies that we have, um, have been taking that it doesn't matter. What matters most is really the choices women and girls have uh, before us to make the proper choice to ensure that they can live the life they want to live. Because we know that um, Europe will be the only region that will have a lower fertility and the population um, decrease by uh, 2050. And everywhere else, population will continue to, ri to rise up, despite any policy that will be selected. So the, the main question is how government should ensure that gender equality and personal choice are really at the forefront of every policy that they're going to be taken, either it is education or health, or just inclusive growth. Do you believe then that we are asking the wrong kinds of questions when it comes to population? Absolutely, absolutely, totally wrong, uh, wrong question. What we need to ask today is everybody has a space that he can thrive. Today we realize that 44% of partnered women and girls have not the liberty to select when they want to have kids and how they want to live their lives. Imagine if they were possible to have that choice, to say, I want to have one kid or two. But in another world as well, there are some women who would love to, get, to have kids and they can't. They can't. So what are the possibilities as well yet for them to still thrive and benefit of all the advantage of this modern society can provide them with? But how do we tackle those kind of problems? And perhaps if we look particularly to Africa, where you have worked obviously for many years and you've nearly three decades experience with the UN. So just talk to us a little bit about how cer certain countries in Africa are being affected by these challenges that are posed by population growth. And are they prepared for the changes that are to come? Uh, thank you for that. Uh, you know, uh, by 2050, five of the most populated countries in, in the world will be in Africa. Will be in Africa. So there is something. If you take a country like Niger, for instance, they really work on their high fertility rate. And today they realize that even if decreasing that is the first step, and making sure that the family planning services are available, then we need to ensure that the girl stays in school longer that the uh, child marriage stops to ensure that they can participate to the society and they can ensure that to select the kind of life girls want for themselves. And that is, that is a track record already. For a country like the DRC, for instance, what is the most important thing to be taken, actually, is the general census of the population. We need to know what is the real population on that. And we still don't know. And the report says as well, it talks about family planning, um, saying that it, it should not be used for a tool to achieve fertility targets. Where is that happening and how exactly is it happening? The, the world is very diverse. 
fertility family planning needs to happen when it can prevent maternal mortality. You know, our motto really, our goal at the United Nations Population Fund is to ensure that to lower maternal mortality. Women are still dying while giving birth. And family planning serving that purpose as preventive measure against maternal mortality, not to lower or to increase population rate, which is totally different philosophy about it. It's to save women's life, not to have the government telling how many population we should have in a given country. And Dina, you say as well that a radical rethink is needed in terms of how we talk about population numbers, about how they're framed, overblown narratives you talk about. Yeah. Perhaps we've seen a little bit of the, that when it comes to, we've talked a lot in the last couple of months about the population in China, it's been overtaken, surpassed by that of India. Is that the kind of thing that you're talking about? Do we need to change how we discuss these issues? That's a great example to talk about China and India. But the other great example or to see where population are decreasing and where young people don't want to have kids anymore. Because they say the life cost is so expensive that they cannot afford to have. Who will take care of their kids? That's the one way to see it. Another way, I would like to have more kids because I can afford it. I live in a condition that can be um, sustainable for those kids. Just like climate change, you know, it as well needs climate solution. Population has nothing to do with the climate crisis today. So those, for people and for planet, the, re re the report focus on what matters most in every single context. So government needs to work to ensure to look, to leave no one behind in their own very context. Instead of taking only the numbers and say, okay, this is what I want. I want a smaller population. It does, it, it's not that easy. Today, we are in a living complex world where crises are bursting from everywhere, and yet where, as well, wealth and prosperity is everywhere as well. So try to make a good balance. Can we turn just before, before you leave us to the US? And we're a year on from the Supreme Court's decision to remove the constitutional right to abortion. How concerned are you about what's happening with reproductive rights for women in the US? The pushbacks on reproductive rights are terrible, almost everywhere, everywhere. That pushback, it, that's what is going to kill women. Because the women that are going to suffer, whether in the US or everywhere else, are the most vulnerable one, the indigenous women, the, the women of African descent. So those ones are the ones who will not access those. And this is the first condition. And the first, the second condition of the US rules is the example it gives to the rest of the world. The US is a fabulous, very powerful country. Say, so, okay, if a big country can do that, what should we do? What kind of example is that? So that's what is the most important. The vulnerable women are the going that are the ones who, who have that at stake, who will going to suffer. And I hope that will be reversed one day. Okay, because the repercussions can be felt ar around the world, DNA. Thank you so much for your time and for coming into us. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it there. We have run out of time. But that is DNA Keita, Deputy Executive Director of the United Nations Population Fund. Thank you so much for being Thank with us here so on Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.